introduce our speakers here. All right, so uh, welcome everyone to Two Languages, One Community, a discussion about the creative partnership of Michael War and Chun Yu. My name is Taryn Edwards, and I am one of the librarians here at the Mechanics Institute of San Francisco. And this event is produced in partnership with the San Francisco Writers Conference, um, which is an organization with whom I work very closely with to provide learning experiences for the Bay Area writing community. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Mechanics Institute, we are an independent membership organization that houses a wonderful library, the oldest in fact designed to serve the public in California, not just mechanics, a cultural event center and a world renowned chess club that is the oldest in continuous operation in the United States. Right now, however, due to the shelter in place, almost all of our activities are virtual but I encourage you to consider becoming a member with us. It is only $120 a year, and with that, you help support our contribution to the literary world of the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, our speakers today are both uh, affiliated with the Institute. Um, Michael War is a decorated author and poet with several books to his name. He recently was presented with Berkeley Poetry Festival's Lifetime Achievement Award, and in 2017, he was named a San Francisco Library Laureate. He also is the former deputy director of the Museum of the African Diaspora here in the city and has extensive experience in community-based arts. I have a lot of material to put in the chat space about him, uh, so I will do that shortly. Meanwhile, Chun Yu has a doctorate from Rutgers University in chemistry and was a postdoctoral fellow at a Harvard-MIT joint program. She is the author of multi-award winning uh, a memoir called Little Green and is working on a historical graphic novel. And her work merges science, art, and spirituality based on her experiences as an immigrant from a culture undergoing revolution to, and coming into a new world of transformat transformative science and technologies. Um, she has won support from the Zellerbach Foundation, Poets and Writers, um, and all sorts of other community-based um, organizations for her community work in poetry and in writing. So I'm going to put her website in the chat space as well, and let's use that space as a place to put questions to pose to uh, Chun and Michael after their um, presentation. Um, I also want to say that their books are available via Alexander Book Company and other local uh, bookstores. We just like Alexander because they're the closest to Mechanics Institute. All right. Thank you both for coming and um, speaking with our with our friends here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Taryn, and um, welcome everybody. We're really glad to, to, to be here. And I just want to kind of uh, reiterate the point about the bookstore, not only to buy our books, but also to support our local book bookstore. So I used to just work two blocks away from that particular store, and I'm glad that our books are there. And we, Chun and I met in 2014, and we've been working on this project, Two Languages, One Community, ever since. We, we, we kind of started it the very next day after we met, which was at a poetry reading at the, um, one of Jack Hirschman's readings that was at Fort Mason. And um, we just kind of start talking. I, I let her know that I had been long wanted to have my poetry translated into Chinese and uh, hadn't been successful at that. So I put it on the back burner. But the next day I was able to share some poems with Chun Yu. And I think a lot of times that might be the way that translation relationships starts with the translator seeing a few poems by the writer. And uh, this poem that I'm going to start with was not one of those poems because this poem emerged out of our collaboration. Uh, Chun, is there anything you want to say before I start reading? Yes, I would really um, like to thank um, 
the Mechanic Institute Library and Terran for putting this together. And, and the library is, is one of my favorite places in the city. I used to go there a few times every week. So it's very hard. And I even have my own desk, you know, my favorite desk and second favorite and third favorite. <laughs> I just go, I mean, I spend a lot of my time writing uh, there since I become a member. So I really, really long to go back. Um, so hopefully this, that time will come soon. <laughs> so, but it's just wonderful to be able to do this. And, and the, uh, the Mechanic Institute um, Library has been very supportive um, for all, all kinds of, all my writing projects. I've done like multiple events there. And I was gonna do an event for my uh, San Francisco Arts Commission grant for, the, for my um, uh, graphic novel about Chinese um, uh, immigration history in San Francisco, but that's, the event is canceled, um, but I still hope, you know, one day we'll, we will be able to do that. So thank you again um, for for being so supportive and uh, now can you know also being part of our two languages one community project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That, sorry. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm also looking forward to being there again. Um, I've been to many wonderful events, so let's make this one part of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, this first poem that I'm going to read, as I mentioned, was, was um, not one of the poems I gave to you because one of the things that has happened with our work is it has inspired us to write new poems. And this is a poem called Black Star. And uh, what, what you're looking at right now is the cover of a book that we have coming out from our workshop, which combines poetry and prose uh, that uh, to, translated and in some cases there are other translators in the in the book who were in the workshop and um, the images that you see there are of Chun and my mothers and um, this poem emerged out of a situation where when I, I didn't see that image of my mother until relatively recently and when I saw it I was struck by how what a beautiful image it was I thought wow she looks like a movie star and many people that I showed it to also said the same thing. But this poem is about as beautiful as she was, how people used to tease her for being so black. It's called Black Star, Gaynell War, 1932 to 2015. She got called Shinola outside her name as slight against her blackness by lost souls caught inescapably in her dark attraction and blinded by her radiance in the sky. Okay, the Chinese version. Hei Ming Xing, Gai Ni Er, Wu Er, Yi Jiu San Er, Dao Er Lin Yi Wu. Zuo Wei Dui Ta De Hei De Mie Shi, Ta Bei Na Xie Shi Luo Zai Ta, Wu Fa Tao Tuo De Hei Se De Xi Yin Li Zhong, 和被他在天空中耀眼的光芒，照瞎了眼睛的灵魂们，称呼为西努拉邪友。Thank you, Chun. And later, when we have discussion, we can talk about how we come up with some of our themes and how how we've been influenced by each other. Mm -hmm. This next um, poem is called "To Your Assailant, Who Attacks Us All." And this is also an, a, a really new poem. It kind of represents um, my um, kind of a change in my own writing because I can hold on to a poem for years. But this one, we were both asked to participate in a project with the Chinese Culture Center, the Chinatown Culture Center. And um, it was part of a project where they asked us to respond to COVID-19 and also to shoot a video. So you can find the video of this poem on our website, twolanguagesonecommunity.com. Um, and it was shot on the stairs of the Asian Art Museum with the city hall in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna read that now. To your assailant who attacks us all. The, the, the project that, the, um, that we're responding to also was about the violence against um, Chinese people that was going on around the world. 
Do you call yourself God-fearing, devoted to do on to others? Does your God condone your violence, your ignorance, your corruption? Does your God hate your neighbor like you do? Does your God share your love for prophets bearing false witness, fueling your grievance fever? Do you swallow the lies they regurgitate? Do you really need a reason? Are you truly a true believer of both God and golden calf? Does the all knowing know you? Do they love you as you are? Does it matter that they are watching your naked depravity? Do you pray before you pray on innocence in this guilty world? Do you have your God's blessing or are you as godless as you seem? Did your father teach you to beat the mean and maim? Is he proud of your cowardice? Does your mother say, well done, son? Did they train you in backwardness? Do you feel bigger in your smallness, content with acts of uselessness? Is your inner bully seething still beneath your concealed surface? Are you comforted in your criminality, stupefied by superiority, simply insane or lost? Who are you? Yes, um, I just want to tell people a little bit um, about, you know, when I translated this poem and, uh, you know, the, the whole background of COVID-19. So I came back the end of January, right before all of the direct flights um, to and from China were, can were canceled. So uh, I came back for our event um, with the Chinese Cultural Center. Um, and then, you know, lots of bad incidents around the world were happening towards Asians because of the COVID-19. And Michael, uh, and there was an incident in, in um, San Francisco in Bayview. Um, it caused a lot of attention. Um, so it was a tough time. And then Michael wrote this poem. I, I was really deeply um, moved. And, and so I translated and then we shared it with um, communities from both sides, including my Chinese um, and Chinese American community. So, so people really appreciate it. It's a very timely piece. Um, so, 是攻击你们的人, 他们在攻击我们, 所有人, 这是正在进行中的咆哮, 对新冠疫情中, 对针对亚裔暴力攻击的回应, 你自称敬畏上帝吗? 你致力于己所不欲, 误失与人吗? 你的上帝宽恕了你的暴力,你的无知,你的堕落吗? 和神像真正的信徒吗? 你那全知的神认识你吗? 他们会这样爱你吗? 哦, 他们会这样, 会爱这样的你吗? 你在乎他们看着你赤裸的堕落吗? 在袭击这个有罪的世界上的无辜者时, 你祈祷吗? 你有上帝的祝福吗? 还是像你看起来那样没有上帝还在沸腾吗？你在被优越性麻木了的罪犯罪中受到了安慰吗？是疯了还是迷途了？你是谁？Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This um this last piece I'm going to read is an excerpt. It's from a much longer poem. I call it a serial poem, and I started adding names to this poem in two thousand in two thousand and eighteen just adding the names of black people who were shot by the police um, 
sometimes for the most mundane reasons, most of them um, unarmed or even or legally armed. And it's called What Not to Do, an unfinished poem. And Chun has also translated this and today will be the first time that um, this poem is being read in Chinese in public. And this is only an excerpt. It's about three minutes, a little bit over three minutes of a poem that's somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes. And um, you'll be able to find this on our um, website as well at some point. What not to do, an unfinished poem. Breathe, Eric Garner choked. Sell, Lucy's. Resist to death. Stand, Amadou Diallo in vestibule. Carry wallet, look out of place, act suspicious, 41 fired, 19 bullets, kill. Park, Tanya Haggerty, on side of road. Talk, on cell, on side of road. Shot, on side of road. Drive, Philando Castile, with broken headlights. Carry, legal firearm. Announce you have a gun. Shout, not reaching for gun. Shot, five bullets, two to heart. Approach, Oscar Grant, the police. Beg, not to shoot. Kneel, shot anyway, in back. Carry, Tamil Rice, toy gun, shot with real bullets. Carry, remain Brisbane, prescription bottle, shot, two bullets to torso. Not carry Keith Lamont Scott, a gun when told to drop it, shot. B, Natasha McKenna, schizophrenic. B, superhuman, stunned while shackled, 50,000 votes to death. B, John Crawford, an imminent threat. Shop for Walmart air rifle, carry Walmart air rifle at Walmart. Talk on cell phone at Walmart. Shot with real bullets at Walmart. B, George Floyd, a suspect. B, a six foot seven black man. B, claustrophobic, asphyxiated, knee on neck while handcuffed. Run, Stephen Clark through grandmother's yard. Carry, cell phone, shot, 20 bullets fired, eight hit primarily in back. Jog, Ahmaud Arbery, shot, two bullets kill while hunted. Sleep, Breonna Taylor in bed, shot, eight bullets kill. Sleep, Richard Brooks at Wendy's, flee for daughter's birthday. Point, did taser over shoulder, shot, two bullets in back. Walk, Elijah McLean, home, look sketchy, play music, wear ski masks, shop for iced tea, carry iced tea, act crazy, whisper can't breathe, display super human strength, beg to go home, be anemic, be suspicious, be on something, choked to death, breathe. Mm. Yes, I, um, so when Michael first showed me this poem, I thought we were not sure. I mean, he, he um, if this is translatable, um, because it has such a unique style. Then, then I thought about it. I said, um, so I tried in Chinese, and I feel it, it does work. Um, so eventually, and, and this is also a shorter version of the poem, what Michael read. He has a very long one, right, it was, which is, um, I translate a seven minute version one and we uh, shorten it to three minutes for this reading. <laughs> so yeah, um, and then of course, as we all know, this is an ongoing poem because what, what's happening now. So in Chinese, 不要做什么,一首未完成的诗,作者, Michael War, um, Yuchun Fan Yi. 呼吸, 
，埃里克·加纳，窒息，卖香烟，反抗，致死，站立，阿马杜·迪迪亚洛，在门廊，携带钱包，看，不自在的。举动，可疑，四十一枪打了，十九颗子弹，杀死。停车，谭雅，哈格西，在路边，谈话在手机上，在路边，被射杀，在路边。开车，菲兰多，卡斯蒂尔，刹车灯坏了，携带。合法武器，宣布你有枪，喊叫，没有伸手拿枪，被射杀，五颗子弹，两颗打到心脏，接近奥斯卡·格兰特，警察祈求不要开枪，跪下，被射杀，还是从后面，携带。卡米尔·赖斯，玩具枪，被射杀，用真的子弹，携带鲁曼·布里斯本，处方瓶，被射杀，两颗子弹打到躯干，没有携带。基斯·拉蒙特·科斯特，枪。当被告知要放下他时，被射杀。放下卡胡安雷一把枪，后来发现的，被射杀。从背后，是娜塔莎·麦肯纳被人攻击，精神分裂症。是超人，是。备考时被电击，五万伏特，致死。是约翰·克劳·福德，一个迫在眉睫的威胁。购买沃尔玛七步枪，携带沃尔玛七步枪，在沃尔玛谈话，在手机上，在沃尔玛被射杀。用真的子弹，在沃尔玛，是乔治·弗洛伊德，一个嫌疑犯，是一个七英六英尺、七寸的黑人，是幽闭恐惧症患者，窒息，膝盖压在脖子上，戴着口手铐，奔跑，史蒂芬·克拉克。穿过祖母的院子，携带手机，被射杀，二十颗子弹射出，八颗击中，主要从后面，慢跑。还埃嗯埃哈麦克麦德，阿伯里被射杀，两颗子弹杀死，狩猎时，睡觉。布莱恩娜·泰勒在床上被射杀，八颗子弹杀死。睡觉。雷沙德布·鲁克斯在温迪汉堡店逃跑，为女儿的生日点死电枪，在肩上被杀，两颗子弹从后面走回伊里亚。麦克恩莱呃莱恩家，看起来可疑。放音乐，戴滑雪面罩，买冰茶，拿着冰茶，举止疯狂，解释不能正确的呼吸，展示超人的力量，祈求回家。是贫血，是多疑，是磕了什么药？被窒息、致死，呼吸。Thank you. Thank you, Chun.
You're welcome. Um, yes, so I will move on to my reading. Uh, a reading of my own poetry. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have some slides to share. Um, screen share. Um, you guys can see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I just need to do the slideshow. Um, the slideshow. Okay, so I um, want to start by introducing uh, my first book, which is a memoir in free verse. Uh, it's called Little Green. Um, and, um, and I wrote this when I was a scientist. And it was in free verse because I tried to write it the normal way. It didn't come out. <laughs> it didn't flow. So. Um, so I basically, my whole childhood was spent in the Chinese Cultural Revolution. And uh, so I told uh, the 10 years of my childhood uh, during that, um, you know, difficult and very tragic time. And at that time, also China was isolated from the rest of the world. So we, except a very few communist country we were connected to. Um, so I never saw a foreigner when I was a child. Um, and um, I did not know what the rest of the world looked like. Um, and also I did not know what the past looked like either because lots of the old traditions um, were not taught in, in the schools and lots of books were burned. And so, I will just share the opening of this book. Um, and the library has my book, um, Little Green. I was born in a small city near the East Sea when the great cultural revolution began. My name is Xiaoqing, Little Green. My country, Zhongguo, the Middle Kingdom. When I was 10 years old, our leader died and the revolution ended. And this is how I remember it. Little Green, Xiaoqing was the name they gave me. Qing, the green of tree leaves in early spring, of clear water in a deep pond, my Baba said, of beautiful youth, the evergreen of life. My mama said, and of precious gold, warm clothes to the heart, my nanai said. So you have this young life born into pretty, uh, pretty much the moment, actually, the moment uh, the Great Cultural Revolution was announced. Um, later on, I went to Beijing University or Peking University. Um, that's one of the very important cultural institute of China. It's very, the whole university's history is reflective of modern, of modern Chinese history. Actually, the, my birthday was the day uh, the Cultural Revolution was announced in the university history. And I only learned years later. So I feel I was destined, destined to write this book, uh, changing my past from a scientist. I had no idea why I was, something was driving me. It could, I couldn't be a scientist peacefully until I start to write this book. So this is me and my brother, older brother, Gugu. Uh, and uh, we were both, we each holding a Mao's little red book. And some of you here probably are familiar with it. And, and I actually later, like a few years ago, I learned the Black Panther raise their funding for their first two guns, uh, two weapons by selling the little red book I was holding in the, on the Berkeley campus. It was such an interesting history, uh, I find out later. But, you know, we had no idea of the Black Panther or what's, uh, we only like, but in the whole uh, history classes, uh, we were denouncing um, the evil capitalist society, of course, right? So that we learned. 
And the other thing is, um, this is my dear grandmother. So if you look at the little shoes we are wearing, they are cotton shoes that she made us. And it's a Chinese tradition for thousands of years. We made shoes from cotton. And those like little, the, the sole of the shoes and it's layers after layers of cotton. It's very hard to stitch through, but you know, it's, it's full of stitches. And, uh, and she basically, um, half of the time we were with her because my father was sent to be re-educated in the, con uh, you know, in a countryside and, um, and my mother was teaching in the country school. So we only saw him a couple of times a year. And then every night my, my mother and all of the teachers in her school has, have to, had to go to study um, you know, revolutionary theories. So all of the children were locked up at home. So our grandparents had to come to rescue. So most of my friends um, are brought up at least partially by, by our grandparents. And my grandmother lived in, you know, um, some, some miles quite far away. So one of us will be sent to be with her. And uh, she, you know, she, um, uh, there were cotton produced in our field, uh, in our uh, area. So we followed her to pick cotton uh, when we were children. So when I learn about the black history in this country, and that's one thing um, I can relate to, cotton picking. Um, so as a child, it's very hard for you to imagine the life of people in a country you never, you know, visited, never seen. But as a child, I can relate through something I knew. Um, so this, so I wrote this poem, Cotton, like not very recently, um, and uh, went after the the. Uh, Asian Art Museum event um, and I wrote this in one morning like in one hour it just somehow it just came out of me um, so cotton all I could think of was little black hands picking picking and the picking snow white cotton when I was a child learning about your people's fate on the other side of the ocean in the winter classroom with no heating. My country red and deep in revolution, isolated from the world. I heard slavery, a term ancient and distant, redenounced in the land where I sat with frozen toes, trembling with indignation and a yearning for justice, the original shan, the pure goodness at the heart of a child, revolution or not, red, black, or other. I had never met a child of another color. All I could think of was little black faces smiling like blooming cotton flowers bursting warmth in the summer harvest. All I could think of was little black hands giving warm white cotton away. Little black hands snatching a, snatched away from black hands of mama and grandma. Little black hands forever lost in the vast world. Little black hands forever reaching at a loss. Little black hands forever wiping tears, clear and salty, just like my own when I missed my mama. As I snuggled next to my grandmother under an ancient oil lamp, her hands roughened from cotton picking for the ism and the revolution we much we must all love and give everything to. Stitching and cushioning shoes night after night with the few handfuls of cotton rationed to her. 
and a long thread she spun with a wooden spindle, spinning since the beginning of time and the memory to keep my feet warm. Little black hands, where was your cotton? Where was your thread? Where were your mama and a grandma? I had never met a child of another color when I learned your history as a child. All I could feel was your ocean of tears flooding into the yellow sea, rushing the shore a hundred miles away. Thank you. <laughs> so I have shown this poem only to two people. First, of course, Michael Wall, <laughs> and the other is my dear friend Mitch. He's here in the audience. And uh, I want to thank to both of them for their, you know, such immediate response and you know, to help me to, to, to finalize this poem. It happened really fast. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. I wish I could write a poem like this every week. Um, so I actually have a Chinese translation. I just wanted you to look at it. We not, might not have time to read every Chinese translation. So yeah, it's there. You can, you can look at it. So uh, I, so this is a, a painting from my dear little sister. She's in this photo with me. She's kicking the shoes my grandmother made her. So she, she, painted this painting, she'd give it to me because she knew how important this is to both of us. And I would be probably in the world, the one of the person who, I mean, also my brother who appreciated the most. So this is the history of cotton and my connection to here. And I was just remember uh, the other day that um, when I was in, in like middle school learning, um, um, English and, you know, Martin Luther King's um, I Have a Dream uh, was, the recording was one of the recordings, very few in recordings in English we had. I actually, I can recite the whole thing. I could, I don't know now if I still can, in his style, because we listened to it and, it, and uh, you know, we recited and that's part of, you know, my uh, experience learning English too. And one day I shall write a poem about that. <laughs> so uh, as I say, um, the end of uh, basically January the 30th, I came back for this event. Um, uh, I ran to home um, in September because my mother was hospitalized. Um, I canceled this event. It was supposed to be much earlier around the mid-autumn fest festival. And then I made a commitment to do this during Chinese New Year. And, uh, and at that time, San Francisco didn't have many cases and people, and including the city and the Chinese Culture Center were, were very optimistic. They told me, no, we're not canceling the event. <laughs> so I came back to fulfill my promise. It was really hard. I, my heart was completely torn because my mother was still in the hospital then. And so, but I still made that trip. I came back and quarantined myself um, without anybody asking me to for 14 days. And um, right, I mean, the timing just worked out. Right after I finished that, we did this event, which was really great. And then Michael wrote that poem I translated. And then this poem, which I wrote by, for my parents, was published here, um, um, you know, around Father's Day, um, which I asked them to because um, I wrote this poem because my father, um, whenever I visit my parents in Nanjing, and I would go out to meet my friends, he always said, where are you going, little green? Um, let, let's look at the map. He just wanted to know where I was um, to be you know, settled um, with my mom. Um, sometimes it's a, it's a street not far away from home. So that just really stayed with me. So this poem, the map came to me. It was published in Chinese when I was in China um, by the um, Xinhua 
daily, which is a state newspaper. And I brought the paper to, to my parents and to my mom in the hospital. My, my father was there with her every day. So they, they were really happy um, for this. And then Poem of the Day of San Francisco Public Library published this. It's, it's um, curated by uh, Kim Shuck, the current poet laureate. So I give you this poem in both Chinese, in Chinese and English to you. The map. When I was born, your bosom was a map. I occupied all of it in your cradling arms. When I began to walk, your eyesight was a map. I learned my steps, toddling and waddling in your adoring gaze. When I started school, your mind became a map. I ventured out and back, morning and night, in your unceasing care. When I grew up and left home, from hometown to other towns, home country to other countries, your heart became the map. I searched far and wide, high and low, for my direction and a place in the world, in your loving thoughts. Each time I set out for a journey, you asked for my destination, studied an open map, and accurately located the point of my being. Then one day, you picked up a magnifying glass, eyes moving closer and closer, hands trembling more and more, finally at a loss, no longer seeing clearly the lines and the points on the map. You hold me in your heart. Growing older and older, you can now walk only, you can now only walk in my eyesight, fumbling steps, every trip outside and adventure. From now on, I will walk by your side so you can lean on me when we are at a loss, not knowing where to go. Love is the map. Thank you. So the Chinese version. 地图。刚出生时,你的怀抱是一张地图。我是那地图的全部。在你的怀抱中。刚走路时,你的目光是一张地图。我在那地图中摇摇学步。在你的注视中。上学时，我走出了家门，你的脑海是一张地图。我在那地图中招出木龟，在你的牵挂中。长大后，我离开了家，从故乡到外乡，从祖国到异国，你的心是一张地图。我在那地图中摸索方向，寻找位置。在你的想念中，每当我开始一个新的旅程，你总会打开一张地图，询问我的去处，时时都能准确找到我的所在。后来，你拿起了放大镜，眼睛离地图越来越近，手抖得越来越厉害，终于茫然中，你已经看不清。地图上的点、鱼线、我在你的心里。渐行渐慢，有一天你只能在我的目光里蹒跚。每一次出行都是一场冒险。从此，我将把你搀扶在我的臂弯。当我们茫然不知所向，爱是一张地图。
The last poem I am going to read is called Today. I wrote this on the Chinese Memorial Day, which is April 3rd here, April 4th in China. It's a day um, a million people was diagnosed with COVID-19 around the world. But today we have six millions in US alone. But for me, it's a symbolic moment. When I saw that, I knew we are we were in big trouble. And I have lots of friends coming from science. I have lots of friends working as medical doctors, medical workers, and also researchers um, around the world. Um, I mean, regardless of boundaries of countries and and but everything today is becoming unfortunately very politicalized um, and for me when i came into science i never believed that there should be borderlines between science because i think the whole human human you know species the whole we all own our discoveries um, and that's also why my parents encouraged me to go to science because they say in science things are much more clear you can say one plus one is two <laughs> but it might not be true anymore and so this is my wish of us to be united today today the world has fallen ill today a million have been diagnosed Today, tens of thousands have left us. Today, the door to heaven is crushed. Today, angels in white are fighting on earth for us. Today, a virus is forcing all nations into a united front. Today, we humans have to learn to become one. Today, 今天一百万人确诊了。今天几万人已经走了。今天天堂的门被挤破了。今天白衣天使们在人间战斗。今天地球正被一个病毒统战。今天人类必须学会成为一起。Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. So now we we are open to answer questions from the audience. Ter Taryn, do you want to host this part? Yes. <laughs> see. Um, just sort of reeling from all that <laughs> dramatic stuff. <laughs> Well, Sally has a question. She wants to know if you um, have considered making a voice recording of your poems because hearing you both speak them is so powerful um, and hearing them both side by side uh, is really helpful. Uh, she thinks it's helpful, I think it too, to, to read them and then also hear your voices at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I did some recordings on my own and also in collaboration. Um, I mean, also uh, in collaboration with some musicians. Um, I would love to, I mean, I'm totally really open to do that. And sometimes I record to, to musics of my own choices that play in the background. It's actually, poetry reciting is very big in China. Yeah, it's, a, it's an art, it's an art that people appreciate, people will listen to. And Michael, you can talk about the situation here and your, what your thoughts are. Well, first of all, it's a, thank you. It's a very good idea. And we have a few poems that have been recorded, um, but it, you know, it's been more hit and miss and it would be good to have kind of a conscious planned, um, supported project to, to do that. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, the To Your Assailant is an example of of that, at least in the English. Um, I think, do you have a recording of that in, in Chinese tune? Yeah, I, 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 I mean, CZ's Chinese Culture Center broadcast it. Right. And, and you, didn't you put, your, put it on the website? Yeah, yeah. And, and, also, and also there is um, one of the first, maybe the first poem we worked on together um, with Chun translating 
me is a poem um, that's on the yeah, that's about my father my taking me to my father's, me my, father's favorite, my father's favorite pastime, okay. uh, which is about the first time my father ever took me to Candlestick Park. And that poem is a, is also available with Chun reading it on the site tracing po po poetic memory. So. Thanks for that idea. I think yeah, we should follow thank you, Gary. Yeah, we would lo love to put a, maybe a more formal production together. Um, Any yeah, other questions? Uh -huh. Other questions? Um, Mana Zay has a question. In which language do you write the poems first? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Translating the poems, is translating the poems difficult? Well, uh, translating poems um, are no spell, uh, small deals and um, even from translating my own poems um, and I like I can never predict the if the poem is going to come to me in Chinese or English like the most uh, like the cotton right came to me in English it was done in English in one shot basically in one hour but I've been contemplating Plating that poem for a long time. And this connection for cotton, whenever I think of the black history here, I mean, honestly, that's the image that comes to me. I have to, I have to take it very seriously. I and mean, also the map, right? My father looking at the map, it just keep on coming. And then came the poem and the map came in Chinese first, but I went back and forth at some point, I forgot which if I have to go back to look. <laughs> but cotton, it happened so recently. I mean, it's just clearly everything came, uh, yeah, in, in English. So it's a very mysterious process. And translation, translating is hard for certain poems. And some poems I haven't, I mean, I haven't even made an attempt to translate because I just look at it and I said, this, this is a little impossible. To translate. Um, so yeah, that's a great question for bilingual poets. I, I think maybe we all go through similar things. Um, yeah, for me, uh, at this time, it's very unpredictable. But if I go to China and I stay there for for a few weeks, like after sometimes even after a week or two, I, you know, most of the poems will come to me in Chinese because the environment is so. Um, power for the whole whole like language environment yeah but here it alternates depending on what I am writing about yeah and at, and, at our uh, next at our next reading I'm going to um, read in Chinese so everybody be ready for that <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um, but Please you know the thing, <laughs> at the thing that I wanted to say is that this is the fourth language I've been translated in over a period of like I don't know, at least 20 years. And the first one was German. And uh, well, the first one actually was actually was Creole. And Jack Hirschman arranged that. I had nothing to do with it. I just saw my poem translated in Creole one day in the magazine. It probably was the first time I'd ever been published. And um, it was a very different experience years later when I went through being translated in German, because like the relationship that Chun and I had, it's, it's very interactive. There's conversation. There's you're picking it apart. You're 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 you know like we um, had this experience where she translated the poem called Black Star, the first poem I read about my mother, and when she when we met to go over the questions that she had about the poem, she ha had not been familiar with the word Shinola, and what I learned is that that word, which we if you grew up in America, you know it's a shoe polish. And what I found out is that in China, it was, a, it was a big fashion brand out of Detroit. I had no idea. And um, so for Chinese people, <laughs> hearing they, the know, word, I mean, they would have no idea what it meant. Yeah, and so, I absolutely don't you know, know what's a Shinola Shushan. Yeah, she, she, had no, she had no idea what it meant. And I had no idea that the company Shinola, it was the same company, the shoe company the shoe polish company had rebranded. But the point is, is that you have to really dig deep over some of these cultural questions to get at not just the translation of the word, but the meaning of the, of the word. And I really appreciate going through that. I learned that in my first experience with the German translator. We, 
and we were using fax machines um, to, to kind of communicate with each other. So that's one of the things I love about this project. And that's what led to the idea of we can bring this experience that we're having into communities and bringing people who are particularly in the African-American and the Chinese community, there's often a lot of division. And we see it as a way of bringing people together, at right. least talking to each other. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we both feel, um, when we first met, I was not, I mean, I have uh, so many of my own projects, so I never really focused on translation. I mean, except my own, own poetry, but at that time, I, actually, I was mostly writing in English, um, but also, write some poems in Chinese. And that's all I, I did the, the translation. Um, and later on I translate um, a, a Chinese author's book. Uh, but in general, I am very careful with that. And, and the po tra translating poetry is a very consuming um, work. But for us, we also built this two language, one community project. We are broadening the connection to other poets in both communities, it's really wonderful to be able to do that. It makes it very meaningful. Um, yeah, we are also hoping to connect to schools because uh, I love to sh show, you know, children of immigrants and lots of them are bilingual. They should realize they have power with their native language they can bring into the community and they can write poetry because some, some people feel like they have to study so much in order to write their first line of poems. And <laughs> it's, you just have to do it. <laughs> and, and you can write about things like, you never know, you can write about Carlton and then it connects all of the history. And so you need a spark and it could be anything. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, we, we, we will continue this. Um, so it's in a broader sense, and that's what this um, project means for me, yeah. And um, oh, did you wanna finish off your thoughts? Oh yeah, I, I, I'm just reading more comments, yeah, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I was struck with um, the poem, What Not To Do, and its rhythm, and so was Arlen and Kate, and I, I just was wondering how, how challenging was that to capture the rhythm um, um, for you? Because amazingly, you pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, I, at the beginning, I, did, I wasn't sure because it's such a unique style. But then, I, as I said, you just have to try. Then I started translating a few lines. I said, oh, this actually can work. Um, so that's, you know, how I started at the beginning. It, it, it's very intimidating um, because, you know, as I said, it's not a structured as a normal structure, right? But then, then I just translated some of it. I, I read it and said, oh, it comes through. Yeah. I actually created a structure for this poem because I typically don't use um, you, you know, kind of designated form. I don't have anything against it. It's just not the way I learned to write. And in this case, I really built a structure for the poem that is absolutely critical to the publication of it. And this poem was so important to me that initially I didn't care if it was a poem. I didn't know if it was a poem. And I submitted it to an award, a Pablo Neruda Award, for Nimrod, um, the Nimrod uh, International Journal. And it was a runner up. And so I jokingly said to myself, okay, I guess it's a poem. <laughs> you know? And they, they published it. But I can't tell you how much I've struggled with the form of that poem and um, how many evolutions it's gone through. I think I finally got it down, but this is after, like I said, I started writing it in 2018. And I, I hope sometimes what I do is I actually take a section of the poem and um, show it so that people can see the, the, the form that it's written in. And I, I really need, which I don't normally need, but I really needed something to control myself. Um, and the form, this form that I created to, to do that, it gives me continuity, like in a film, you know, where you build a character and you have to remember where that character came from, 
who else they've met, who they've been introduced to, because if you don't hold on to that continuity, you all of a sudden you're just, at, you, know, you know, you're going to a tangent. And that's my big struggle with, with this poem. I still find problems with it. And that's another thing I love about the translation process that Chun and I had to go through this poem and I had to answer all her questions and we had to have really um, deep and sometimes complicated discussion um, about it. And again, that's, that's part of the process. And I have to say, this is the first time I've heard her read it out loud. And what I realized from my work with her is that I think in my mind, I was expecting, I should know better, but I was expecting her to say the, the names in English, but that's not the way it works, which means this is extremely complicated. She had to take each one of those um, names and find the, you know, the, the um, I, I'm calling it the sound, I'm not using the technical word, but Shun, can you talk, do we have time? Can you talk a little bit? Yeah, yeah. That? I mean, and it's a little easier now because lots of the names are like uh, pretty yeah. common names. They have right. common translations in Chinese. Um, yeah. So I don't have to make them up. I prefer not to because if a name is translated a certain way, I shouldn't, right? So these are all according to songs. I have to, but I have to check some yeah, of them. You have uh, you don't I have to make them up, but you see if I agree with the translation yes. um, they have because sometimes it's not very accurate. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the challenge I was thinking, and I certainly I could just read the English name, but then it's not exactly right. I, want, I love the, I, I love you with the uh, way you did that, and I think that that's also relevant to the rhythm of the uh, of, of the right, poem. Right. Like if I poem. read it in English straight, it will disrupt the yeah. rhythm and it will just sound not right. Yeah, the yeah. So I'm I'm pretty glad. This is the first time I read a I mean I read to myself, of course, but this is we are debuting this this poem today. I have I have real difficulty reading that poem sometimes. The I think it was about, boy, I guess it was over two years ago. The first time I read it in public, I could barely get through it. I broke down. <laughs> yeah, it's a very emotional it, poem. It still happens to me every every once in a while. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean. That, that's I the other thing emotion. going through my mind. Right. I think, uh, I mean, we don't have a Chinese audience today. I, mean, I do think the emotion really comes through um, in Chinese. Yeah. Yeah, we show one day we should uh, read it to a Chinese audience. I'm sure we will. I, th yeah. I think we have somebody with us. <laughs> yes, oh, we, we do. Do we have any Chinese people? Please speak up. <laughs> okay, um, there's some over that, that have called in, but um, some people that have called in, I'm not sure what the... Uh, what their ethnicity is, but yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we have Leon. Leon, I don't know. Leon, do you speak Chinese? Leon, son. Leon, Leon. His mic is off. Yeah. Okay. But do you speak? I do speak. I do speak and hear Chinese, but I can't read it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I still appreciate the sounds of it, and and even more appreciation as I hear the sound and see the words. Mm. Even if I can't read the words by themselves, when I hear it, I know the word. You know, so it's. So I had about uh, maybe second grade Chinese in school when I was still in China. Mm. Uh, once, once we left, and we, I didn't learn Chinese anymore. Yeah, but you can't understand some of the. Some I think it's about seventy percent of it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there was somebody else who raised their hand, but I don't see them now. Is there anybody I, else on yeah. here? I think Mary had to leave. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, Mary, but there is. There are a couple more questions. Um, Arlen asks, Michael, if you're interested in having your work translated into different languages, is it primarily to broaden your broaden your readership or is it just to uh, have a powerful partnership experience? Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, is that I've been translated into German, into Creole, German, French, and what not to do is about to be translated into Spanish. Um, and I think that might be the first time I've been translated into Spanish. And all of those were kind of happenstance. 
You know, um, I, I don't know if I call the, the German translation. No, that wasn't happenstance. That was a real kind of um, planned thing that grew out of the Goethe Institute. And I used to run a, an organization, a literary organization I founded in Chicago. I grew up in San Francisco, but I lived in Chicago for like, you know, 20 years or something. And um, the, uh, I had, we built a relationship with the Goethe Institute. And so we were doing these, these exchanges between German writers and American writers, pretty amazing stuff. And one of them led to my poetry being, being translated. So that was very intentional and very highly organized. And the translator was being paid very well in this type of thing. So um, Chun is laughing. Um, and so we, so I, I am, I am, I had a particular desire to be translated into Chinese. And it's really kind of weird because I just was thinking of it as a poet and getting my poetry out there in the world. It was really, initially, that was the, um, what kind of started the, the process. And, uh, and uh, you know, the more readers that could read your poetry, the better. So why not a bunch of Chinese people? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this, we have it, a lot of like, <laughs> But it's not as easy as it sounds. You, you know, and, and, and now that we actually have work, we are looking for places to publish the bilingual work. And that is easier said than, than done. And I agree with Chun that it would be, a, you know, one of the things we have to work on is getting more bilingual audiences at these readings as well. The reading that we did at the Asian Arts Museum a couple of weeks ago, you know, that probably is the largest audience we've had where there were um, a large number of people who could actually, you know, understand the, the, the Chinese. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I agree with you. And I also mean, at the Chinese Cultural Culture Center. Right, right, right. Um, I also want to say my uh, poem, The Map, has been translated into French by mm -hmm. my friend Mitch Hall, who's here. <laughs> he did a beautiful version. We are, um, I don't know if we have time for him to read it. I, or he, if he's even ready to, to read it this time, I, I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> but yeah, so, <laughs> so I am, um, um, because I was so focused on just, you know, so I'm, my, my work is already bilingual. I was so focused on those two languages. I, I haven't, I mean, there were people keep on asking me, I just haven't turned my attention to, to be translated into other languages yet, um, you know. So I would love to have more connections to do so. I'd like to be translated into an African language. That's something that I thought of, um, thought of recently. And um, that's yeah. something I'll probably pursue. Poetry, oh, Kevin says Poetry hey, International. Hey, Kevin. Yes, <laughs> Poetry International. <laughs> Why don't we take the last few moments to go ahead and open up the, uh, you know, if you want to turn your mic off and ask a direct question, let's, let's do it, have a little powwow together, conversation together. Yeah, we can all unmute ourselves. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? I mean, many of you probably are like um, bilingual. Some speak many languages. Um, you know, I, I have lo lots of friends who speak multiple languages. And, and uh, we are also, um, I mean, people ask us why just those two languages. It's because I only know those two languages and I don't think Michael um, can translate it in another language. So. But this is a concept can apply to many languages together, multi-languages, one community. We're definitely open to, to, to um, include other languages. And just like, you know, I cannot do it by myself. And, and, um, and there are um, other programs like uh, um, my lab at MIT, um, they are running um, actually, multi-language programs for um, young underprivileged um, girls um, to to pursue science, and they are open to open open to expand into literature. So, 
we could collaborate with them and they already emailed me. We are trying to figure something out. So there are just really a lot of things we can do. And if you have any ideas um, you want to explore, we, we are certainly open to for discussion and we can talk about how we do it and as we talk today. And we and this is a work in progress and we have so many projects going on like Chun um, mentioned. So I would encourage you to follow the links. Um, some one person asked about the availability of sound clips. Um, there's some availability of that at Tracing Poetic Memory, for instance, but uh, which is one of my sites. But the site, Two Languages, One Community, pay attention to that. That's a work in progress as well. Um, but for instance, the video that we referred to can be found there. And I think, for instance, Mitch's translation, that's a, pos that's a place where we could share that 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 works so right right keep your eye on that site because we're it's 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 um it's young <laughs> it's relatively new to the world uh and it's gonna uh mature and a lot more is going to be added to it right right we just uh it's an ongoing process um yeah we are also new <laughs> to it yeah um well you're both fabulous <laughs> <laughs> and i want to thank you both for um for uh, for letting me twist your arm and hosting this event, um, and I just want to say if if um, if you have any other ideas of events that you'd like to see or you'd like me to host or if you'd like to star, please let me know because uh, you know word of mouth and you know hosting events that people ask for. Uh, is what we do at Mechanics Institute. We don't want to host events that no one wants to see. <laughs> so please, please be in touch. And, um, and, and thank you both for sharing this, uh, your work with us. Thank you. Thanks it's for inviting me. Thanks to thank everybody you. for being here. And uh, it's, it's great you. connected to the library again. Yeah, and, uh, and to all of the people. And I, I also have writers groups. Uh, in the library and some of my friends from writers groups are here <laughs> bob randall yeah thank you for being here <laughs> and please see our links for upcoming readings there's readings every week right now <laughs> yes yes you are busier than than you've ever been before i expect <laughs> maybe we all are <laughs> opens up uh, opens up possibilities um, <laughs> a lot yeah and i mean there's nothing is all bad or are all good, but uh, I just do miss being in the library. Let me say that another time. <laughs> I miss everything about it, except maybe the commute. I don't miss that, but. <laughs> Even that. Even yeah. that. It's, you know, it's the kind of freedom, right? <laughs> Free to <Okay>. commute. <laughs> Free to commute and to Zoom. <laughs> all right, and well, thank you. Oh, Thank yes. you. Thanks for letting us go a little bit Thank over. You, Michael. You take care. Sure. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. See you Monday. Bye. Take care, yes. Kevin. Yeah. See you, See you Monday. <laughs>